Hi and welcome to the continuation of our final module in the KX workshop series. Now we're going to be taking a look at IPC, um, otherwise known as inter-process communication, and what that really boils down to is getting two different processes talking to each other, um, and they can be on the same machine or they may be on different machines. Um, some of the terminology generally used around this, um, we, we talk a lot about, um, and you'll see referenced server and client processes. So your server process might be your historical database, for example, or your real-time database, and that's the process you're trying to access. And then your client process um, could be something like a gateway or a proxy that's trying to get that data and retrieve that data. Um, but you can have processes that are both client and server, um, depending on the scenario. And then another, um, another common terminology that um, is used when we're talking about IPC is synchronous and asynchronous. So synchronous simply means you're making a request to a server and you're, you're waiting for the response to be returned. And asynchronous is you're making a request to the server and you're not gonna wait for the response to be returned. You're gonna continue on doing what, what you're doing next without waiting for this response. So how can I talk between different servers? So the way to do it is via handles. And in order to um, open a handle to another process, um, that process must have a port um, number set. So, so you can set up a process um, without a port number um, and if you want to assign a port, you can simply run backslash P5000. You can also, um, when you're initializing the process in the command line, you can set the port there. Um, so I can actually show you what that looks like. If we go to learn here and we go to new and hit terminal, you'll be able to access Q here from the command line. So you can type something like Q minus P and say I do 9999, I've now set up a key process that has a port of 9999. I could change it by doing 9900, for example, and I now have a different port. Um, and also, um, I could have just set my process up as without any port. And if I do backslash P, I get zero returned, and then I can set this up to be a port. So depending on your scenario, you might be... Um, setting up the port on initialization or you might be defining it afterwards. Um, because we're on a virtual environment here, um, we're just gonna run and define a process in the background using the system command. You could actually also use it from the terminal, um, but if you wanna do it from the notebook directly, we'll just run a, a system command. And this is just saying, um, create a queue process with this code preloaded and set the port to be 5001. And then once I've done that, once I've got my background process running, this is my server process that I want to connect to. I simply run the command H open and then the, the port number. And if I run that and see what re is returned, H has now been defined as um, four and it's an integer number. And that's our handle. So that's going to be um, basically our door into our other processes. Um, so once I've got my handle back and I've been able to um, get in, I can run things like my tables command that I'm familiar with already on that process. And I can see that that differs to just running tables on my current process. Um, so this is my current process um, where I've loaded all my trips and taxi data. And then this is my remote process, which has got some other data that I haven't seen before. And the notation is H and then in inverted commas. There is also functional notation. Um, and a, like a different notation, um, how you can pass this. Um, but for the purposes of this just quick intro, I'm just going to show you with inverted commas. Um, if you wanted to then inspect this populations table, um, you could obviously retrieve the entire table. If you didn't want to return the full thing straight away, you could run meta on it first or do a select sum first. Um, that would be clever because obviously this is a remote process. If you don't know this, the size of this table, doing a quick count and a quick meta is a very good idea, especially when you're calling um, over a remote process because you can block um, that process for other people who may also be accessing it. Um, so um, we're saying here, we wanted a result return. So this is obviously bringing back population. Um, if I actually don't care about the result, I just want to execute some code on my, my server process, I can send an asynchronous request. So this here is a synchronous request, synchronous request. And if I wanted to send asynchronous, I would just put a negative in front of my handle. Um, and then I can put my H in square brackets and then I'm sending a synchronous re asynchronous request. Um, so let's look at 
what this does. So you can see that's done something, but nothing was returned. And if I check A on the server process, I can see it, it actually has successfully been defined. Um, so that's a very quick high level intro um, into uh, IPC. Um, and we do go into this in much more detail in future courses. Um, but that's hopefully given you a little flavor of what to expect.